All right, thanks for watching and welcome to the queen of applied math, the Fourier transform. And before we cover the Fourier transform, let me talk to you about its little cousin, the Laplace transform. So recall from ODEs, the Laplace transform of f is the integral from zero to infinity of f of t, e of minus st dt, and what this is, is just the weight average, average of f with those functions e of minus st. e of minus st, which I would like to remind you, those are functions that are just exponential in our n that just go down. So this is e of minus st, maybe for small s, but for large s, it looks tamer and tamer. So you're just taking an average of f with those functions that get tamer and tamer. Now, why was this important? It's because it turns differential equations, like y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y, equals three, which is very hard, into algebra equations, such as s squared minus five s plus six, L of y is three over s, which is much, much, much easier. And it turns out the Fourier transform is the same thing, but for more complicated functions. Because all the Fourier transform is, it's the same thing, except we replace the e minus st with squiggly functions ei kappa x, which is just cosine of kappa x plus i sine of kappa x. And again, all you have to visualize is this being very squiggly functions, but in the complex world. So without further ado, what is the Fourier transform? Well, f hat of kappa is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x, e i kappa x dx. So a couple of remarks First of all, the interpretation is the same. So this is just the weight average, average of f with those squiggly functions, ei kappa x. And the way I interpret this is those ei kappa x, they spin around more and more quickly. So if for instance, kappa is 9,000, it would be cosine of 9,000 x, which is very, very wild. So think almost like a record player that just spins around super quickly. And the question is, well, what happens if you put F on that record player? How fast does it spin? And this is sort of what the Fourier transform tries to interpret. That's one thing, and also notice this is in fact a function of kappa, because the x gets integrated out. And finally, in applications, this is super useful, because what f hat does, it takes a function of x, which is position, so it takes f of x, which is position, and turns it into f hat of kappa, where kappa is interpreted as frequency. And turns into f hat of kappa, where again, kappa is frequency. So this is a term you hear a lot. The Fourier transform takes position space or phase space and turns it into frequency space. And it's very useful, for instance, to help it decompose signals. So it's extremely useful in signal processing and electrical engineering, for example. Now, in the rest of the playlist, we will use the Fourier transform to solve PDEs, but 
Lastly, I just want to talk to you about a little demo that is in the description that I invite you to look at. Because for instance, let's take the function f of x is a bell curve, for instance. So let's take f of x and let's see what f hat kappa looks like. Now, for instance, let's plug this in as kappa equals zero, and let's see what happens. So by definition, f hat of zero is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x ei zero x dx, which is just one. So for kappa equals zero, we get just the area under your function f, which if you want is square root of pi, but that's beside the point. And then let's see what happens if we increase kappa. So let's look for instance at kappa equals one. Well then f hat of one is the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x ei one x. So in this case ei x dx which just for practical purposes, in terms of the intuition, just think of EIX as cosine of X, just to be concrete. And then what is F of X cosine of X? Well, it's a more squiggly function. So again, F of X cosine of X dx. Because you're still taking F, but now you're multiplying by cosine, so it might look something like that. So this is f of x, cosine of x. And you see now, well, the areas, they kind of cancel out. So what you get then is that the total area is smaller than this area. So we expect f hat of one to be much smaller. And you see, if now you let kappa equals two, for instance, we get f of x cosine of two x, which is much squigglier and more areas cancel out. So you also expect this to go down. And in fact, if you plot this for more values of kappa, that's what that vertical line is, the area, you will see it actually goes down like this. And similarly, if you let kappa be negative, so here it's symmetric, so actually the area also goes down. And in fact, what's interesting is, you see that now, if you plot f hat of kappa, you get another bell curve. In fact, that's what we'll show in our next video, that the Fourier transform of the Gaussian is actually another Gaussian, which is very, very cool. But, once again, I want to emphasize what f hat measures. It's really how wild the function is. Because let's say f, for instance, is cosine. Then we get integral of cosine squared, where things don't cancel out. So in some sense, it measures how close your function is to your uh, cosine functions. All right. Uh, All right, so that was my primer on the Fourier transform. Please feel free to check out the playlist to learn more about this. And of course, if you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.